So first of all, thank you for participating in this. Uh, I hope has the four days been pretty okay? Yeah. Good, good. Well, I mean, listen, this, I, this is the first uh, year we've done this. And, uh, you know, frankly, it's creating something out of whole cloth is not easy. But we wanted to have uh, something that looked towards the future because this, if there's an issue in the world that looks towards the future, it's this one. Uh, and so if you're here, that means a few things. Number one, I think it probably means you have some um, great interest uh, such that you, you've dedicated a, a part of your lives to this, er this area. It also means that you're pretty talented because hundreds and hundreds of people wanted to, to come here and, and you were chosen uh, because of your, your interest and your skills and, and your background. So congratulations on that. Um, what I wanted to talk about briefly, and I'm just really your opening here, is to thank you for coming to my city, but also to talk for a moment about sort of uh, where we stand in this issue. Um, and I, and I want to use my city as a, as a, as a context for it. So, so I'm sure you've heard me or other people say this city is, is built on porous limestone. It's a man-made barrier island. It sits at sea level, and we get sunny day flooding. We send out uh, notices to our residents when king tides are here. They, our residents know what a king tide is uh, because they have to uh, manage that when they're driving around. Uh, we have spent hundreds of millions of dollars in a pretty ambitious road raising program. Uh, we've uh, explained it to them. Uh, we've started doing it. We've raised 11 miles of roads. We've delivered 48 uh, generators uh, and, and, and systems to get rid of the uh, gravitational system we've relied on. Uh, we've changed our codes. We've adopted uh, heat island ordinances. We've raised our base plane levels. Uh, we do all those things. And we check a lot of other boxes, too. We have a great plastic-free program. We, uh, we, we have a composting program. We do all the things that you would expect a progressive city to do in a state like Florida, where Frankly, you can't do a lot of those things. I mean, we have a plastic-free program in our city, even though the state of Florida has preempted regulation of plastics by local governments. Um, we've been in those lawsuits against the state uh, because we're trying to do what we can in the ways that we can. But I wanted to talk for a moment just about where we sit in this issue because, for me, the challenge of an elected official, or any official, frankly, but of an elected official who has to deliver this is how do you convince people to invest in something whose results they don't see immediately, and they sometimes don't, and if you solve the problem, they never see the problem to begin with. It's really, it's, you know, it's sort of an interesting thing. If you, you tell people, in national security, this is an issue all the time, you, you tell someone, uh, you, t you know, we're going to do all this stuff and spend all this money, and you're never going to have a terrorist attack, and then you never have a terrorist attack, and people say, why did you spend all that money? Uh, and that's sort of how government operates. Uh, and because people are elected, like me, and I'm on a two-year term, it's even more uh, demanding because people want to know every election cycle what you're doing and why and, and if they can see it. So for us, it is always that challenge. Today, however, I think things have gotten much worse. Um, the geopolitical world right now has become so partisan that it's almost impossible to do something without a, a partisan tilt to it. Uh, and it's become... Uh, maddening. Uh, my city during the pandemic, we were very quick to have mask mandates and to do the kinds of closures when there were no vaccines and, uh, and no treatments really. Uh, we probably led, I think we were the first city in the country to actually have a mask mandate, uh, literally seconds after the CDC said we should do so. Um, but on the other hand, everything immediately got uh, fully, part of, you know, fully politicized, all of a sudden taking a vaccine. Uh, was, was a partisan issue, or wearing a mask was an issue. And the result was that unquestionably people died because decisions were made not on science and, but on ideology. And that's sort of a dumb way to handle something that's a science-based or medicine-based challenge. So I guess what I wanted to say to you all today is that this issue is not unlike that, obviously. Obviously there are people who disagree uh, with climate change and, it's, uh, and that it's happening, but also what you do about it. And often where, they, where, those, where the rubber hits the road is about money or is about uh, dislocation. For instance, with my residents, um, we, are, we are spending hundreds of millions to raise roads. And when we raise those roads, it creates some dislocation uh, in, in their neighborhoods. It's not easy uh, to convince an entire population that they've got to see all this happening and it's good for them. And if we do it just right, um, they'll never have the problem we claim was going to happen. Uh, and that's how you have to do it. But for me, 
the, the politicizing of the issue has become an overwhelming challenge. Um, my city happens to be pretty good, and, and, and we're sort of lucky that we are a canary, the canary in the mine shaft in some ways, uh, because if there were a city that had to address this, mine is probably the best to do it, in a sense that we have the problem acutely. We have raised 11 miles of roads, and in every single neighborhood we've done it. Uh, the flooding that did occur is no longer there, so we do have something tangible to show. But as we move forward to places that will be flooding but aren't now, people will say, I don't want to do it. Uh, but at least we can do it. At least we have a $51 billion tax base that allows us to do it. At least we have a progressive uh, population that, uh, that believes in it. Uh, and so that's a good thing. But what's happening now, I think, is that as we, as we push this forward and say we're, it's time to do more things, I think you're going to find that while uh, your entire generation is probably fully committed to this, uh, not all are. And mine certainly isn't. And, and the ones between us certainly are not at differing measures. And so the question is, how are you going to address that? How are you going to convince people uh, through science, uh, through uh, information, through data points, uh, or just simply through, through argument that, that we need to do things now for something that will have a horizon of, of 20, 30, 40, 50, or even a, even a century? How do you do that? And I guess I will tell you, you know, I've had a few different jobs. I was in the state legislature for 10 years. I was a Democratic leader. I was in the House and the Senate. I've had partisan jobs. I was a federal prosecutor, a totally nonpartisan job. And this job has been uh, mostly nonpartisan. But the one thing I have noticed is that if I can draw people in, uh, recognizing that even if I disagree with them, that I need to give them the ability to come to a judgment without uh, hitting them over the head, it works. It has always worked for me. Uh, and if, you, uh, if you've seen any of the, of the presentations this, uh, over these four days, you'll see in our county, uh, we have uh, 34 cities. Uh, and they're all different flavors of politics. Hialeah is as uh, you know, fox watching as probably a community is, and Miami Beach is watching MSNBC most of the day. It's that kind of, uh, but on the other hand, on these issues, we seem uh, to be coalescing, and, I, and, our, and the political leadership has tried very hard to do that. I work pretty regularly with the county mayor and the mayor of Miami, who's a Republican, and we, we don't uh, bicker, we don't uh, demagogue, we don't create populist issues. Um, and for me, that's very important. And I guess the one message I wanted to leave you with is we have to convince the world that this is something they've got to take action on. And... Uh, Beating them over the head probably won't work. Uh, sanctimony is not an organizing principle either. Uh, it has to be about trying to convince people in, the, in words that they understand uh, and in language they understand that this is something that has to be addressed. And so for me, I would just thank you for coming here. But really, uh, you're, I mean, this, this problem, I, I don't want to leave it with you, but frankly, we're leaving it with you. We didn't, this was a trick. We brought you all here uh, telling you we're going to give you Miami Beach for a week, but we're actually just putting this whole problem onto your lap and saying good luck with it. Uh, because this problem is going to be here for, for decades, but it is going to be exactly people like you, people who have passion for it, knowledge, information, skills, who are going to lead the way in this. And I would just urge you as you lead the way, uh, think bold, uh, think broad, and think of ways ways to bring in those people that you might not agree with, but that, uh, frankly, you need uh, to bring to the table and you need uh, to find a solution. So have a great rest of the week. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope to see you here next year in beautiful Miami Beach. We'll be here in March, and, uh, and thanks for participating.